This video is rated G for gas. This is the Arturia Astrolab. It offers a surprisingly straightforward and approachable way of accessing the best of Arturia's library of high quality software instruments in a standalone hardware unit. In this video, I want to tell you what Astrolab is, what it does, and who it might be the ideal instrument for, beyond the spec sheet, from a real user's perspective, after testing it out intensely for the past few weeks. For transparency's sake, know that Arturia sent me Astrolab for review, but they're not paying me, nor do they have any say whatsoever on the contents of this video. If you're already subscribed, huge welcome back. If this is your first time here though. Hi, welcome to the Midlife Synthesis. Let's get started. So what is Astrolab? In a nutshell, Astrolab is a bi-timbral, standalone, hardware version of Arturia's analog software suite. It includes over 1,000 presets from heavy hitters like pigments, Augmented series Classic tones from virtual emulations of legendary synths such as the Jupe 8V and Prophet 5V Organic tones from the always beautiful Piano V3 collection. As well as many, many others. It's important to note that we aren't talking about sampled instruments or your run-of-the-mill Rompler here. These are not process recordings of the virtual instruments. This is actually the real deal, powered by DSP and using things like true analog emulation and physical modeling to synthesize everything in real time, which makes a huge difference in the quality and the expressiveness of the sounds that come out of this thing. I'll get into the actual sounds, workflow, and possible use cases later in the video, but let's have a quick look at the hardware first, shall we? Astrolab has a 61-key, semi-weighted keyboard with aftertouch. The resistance and springiness of the keys strikes a great balance between making you actually feel the instrument while also being fast enough to handle quick synth leads. And one of the things that has left the greatest impression on me about this unit is just how good it feels to play on overall. Though I hold up on my shoulder It makes me feel confident when I'm playing and makes me think that I'm a much better pianist than I really am, which I appreciate. Piano presets are a standout here and I felt really connected with each note that I was playing, which is always something that I find a bit lacking when playing software synths on a computer through a MIDI keyboard, since there's always just a hint of lag or slight disconnect between the physical touch and the sound that comes out. This is certainly not the case in the Astrolab, and be it pianos or synths, you always feel like you're playing an actual living thing. The aftertouch action and sensitivity will depend on the preset that you're playing, but I found that you have to lean into it quite a bit for it to trigger. It's definitely much lighter than on the Roland Phantom 8, which I had to press down so hard that I almost felt I was going to snap the keys, but it's heavier than the Polybrute or the Subsequent 37, being much closer to the Mini Freak for reference. The overall aesthetic of the Astrolab is minimalistic, elegant, yet modern. The white chassis contrasts beautifully with the wooden end cheeks, and the silver knobs and white rubber buttons are highlighted by LED lights that allow for easily navigating the unit in low light conditions. The star of this show is without a doubt the fully colored high resolution circular screen in the middle of the panel. It's the main navigation tool on the Astrolab and you can use it to scroll through and select multiple options and menus. I love that it shows you a high resolution icon of the synths that you're using and the click that it makes when you're scrolling is weirdly satisfying. 
It also acts as an enter button if you press down on it, and below the screen encoder you'll find a few more navigation controls. On the left, you have a pitch bend and a mod wheel, as well as an octave up and down button. You have our arpeggiator, chord and scale mode buttons, and quick access to the meter looper and the metronome. To the right of the screen encoder, you have the part selectors, which allow you to load up up to two presets at the same time, be it layered or in split mode, and right next to it, you have your macros knobs. If you've ever used Analog Lab before, these will probably look very familiar. They allow you to control useful parameters for performing that will vary from preset to preset, but are generally assigned to things like filter resonance, cutoff, pulse width, and LFOs. These macros also have shift functions for secondary parameters like volume and EQ. Below these controls, you'll find a row of quick access buttons to different instrument categories. Finally, you have four effects knobs that provide the dry-wet mix level with dedicated on and off buttons, as well as a quick access to the edit parameter pages. On the back of Astrolab, you get five pin MIDI in and out ports, multiple pedal inputs, including expression and sustain, stereo audio inputs with a gain knob that pops in and out of the unit, stereo outputs, a headphone jack, USB ports for connecting storage and syncing to a computer, and a power button that lights up when you turn the thing on. You've got to give it to Arturia in the looks department. This thing is beautiful and it just screams high quality whichever way you look at it. But the Astrolab isn't just a hot piece of gas. It's also very smartly designed in its workflow and software. In standalone, this thing is pretty much as straightforward as it gets and there are only a few things that I had to check in the manual to get to work properly. But the rest is pretty self-explanatory. You can access different sounds by category either directly on the physical buttons or you can press the home button to view more categories as well as other filters such as like presets, instruments, or artist categories. The artist category is a really welcome addition and I had loads of fun searching for some of my favorite musicians and being pleasantly surprised to find some of the most iconic sounds right there on my fingertips. I really hope they continue to expand this list in the future because it's a great starting point if you're referencing a song or if you maybe want to do a live cover. As far as polyphony goes, it really depends on the engine that you're using, with some synths going from 1 to 12 voices and pianos going up to 48 voices of polyphony. Also, don't forget that you can load up a maximum of two presets on Astrolab, so you can go by timbre, and of course the polyphony count there will vary depending on how demanding the software is on the DSP. Astrolab comes equipped with four effects, two of which are dedicated delay and reverb, and the other two are customizable, and you can choose from a list that includes things like chorus, phaser, compressor, etc. The delay and reverb also have different types to choose from, and though they do sound great, I hope that this is an area where more more options become available in the future. And yeah, maybe I'm getting a bit greedy, but I really love to see Arturia's own tape Mellofy or the LX24 reverb here someday. The Analog Lab software comes bundled with the Astrolab, and one of the highlights here is how it handles the integration, or should I say, the disintegration with that software. The idea here is that if you're hooked up to a computer or making music in your DAW, you have full access to all the parameters of your synths. So if you want to go crazy making a patch on pigments layered with a piano, for example, you can. The main gripe I have with making patches on my computer though is that if I ever want to use those patches in a live setting, I'd either have to take my computer with me or make a multi-sampled instrument. Both valid options of course, but not really ideal for me. Astrolab allows you to grab those same patches and save them into your hardware unit and then you can take your show on the road and leave the computer at home. That actually makes me want to spend time finding great presets and making my own patches in the software since I know that I'm not dependent on the computer to actually use them. A final standout feature on the Astrolab, which will probably come in very handy for live performers, is its smartphone app. With it, you can easily search for and organize your presets from the comfort of your touchscreen. I found myself using this way more than I initially thought I would because there's just a ton of presets in here. And sometimes instead of just scrolling through, it's easier to just type in the name on your phone and voila. As far as using Astrolab with your DAW, it's a great dedicated MIDI controller for Analog Lab. Though you can run multiple instances of the software in different tracks with different presets, in order for you to control each one of those presets individually, in the current firmware at least, you need to relink Astrolab manually to the current instance that you're using each time. It doesn't automatically sync up to the track that you choose. Something else to look out for when you're controlling your software with the Astrolab is that if you go from one instance to another and touch one of the macro knobs, the current software value will jump 
to the value that is currently displayed on the hardware unit. Also, if you turn the screen encoder on the hardware, the preset will sync to whatever is on the unit and override whatever you had on that track. Hopefully, Arturia can figure out a way of maybe locking in those presets or finding a way for it to work more seamlessly, but for now, I wouldn't recommend jumping back and forth between analog lab instances way too much, especially if you're already happy with the sound you have. The Astrolab features no perceivable lag between what's happening on the unit and what's happening on the screen when you're playing around or tweaking parameters, and it can also be very useful for recording automations into your DAW in a range review. And though that is very cool, to be honest, I'm really more excited about being able to ditch the computer and have all of these sounds available for me to use when I'm hooked up to one of my samplers. So how would the Astrolab fit into a dollar setup. It's actually perfect because one of the limitations of going dollars is not having access to the amazing VSTs that now exist. And one of my favorite libraries is Arturia. So now I have everything over here ready to be sampled. Okay, now let's spice that up. for something kind of plucky. I'm gonna use my cell phone app, Astrolab Connect. There we go, Alfred's Aviary. Okay, that's sounding really great. Now let's wrap that up with some nice piano chords. By the way, if you've been enjoying this video or maybe some of my past content, a great way to support this channel is just leaving a simple like, maybe a comment or subscribing, even using one of my affiliate links down below. Everything and anything helps. Thank you so much. So is this the instrument for you? Well, it really depends on who you are and what you need. And I think it's very important to be very clear about what Astrolab is definitely not. It's definitely not a workstation like a Phantom or an MPC, nor is it a DAW in a box like a Deluge as it has no sequencer, nor does it have any arrangers or anything of the sort, even though it does have a very fun, be it simple, MIDI looper. It is also not a hardware synth slash sound designer's weapon of choice, since the options you have for tweaking your sounds in standalone are limited and seem to be more focused on parameters that will have the most impact in a live situation. But if you don't mind going into the software, you get an insane amount of sound design options. Now, what's funny is the lack of standalone synth parameters for me to tweak seemed like a con at first, but if I'm really being honest here, what initially seemed like a limitation actually has been very liberating. By only adding a pinch of salt with the macros and the effects to make them just right, the rest of my time with Astrolab has been spent just having fun and making music. And that might be the highest praise that I can give the Astrolab, that the curation of the presets on this thing is stellar. The Astrolab has been a refreshing experience, and I feel that it's tailor-made for a huge demographic of musicians who are not particularly preoccupied with the minutia of sound design itself, but who still want access to an amazing sound palette that only a synthesizer of this caliber could offer. Both in the studio or on any stage, this is first and foremost a musician synth. So what are your thoughts? Does Arturia have a winner here? What are some possible alternatives that might make for a fun comparison video? I'd love to know down in the comments, so let's keep the conversation going. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful, or at least entertaining. Have a great week. See you next time.